Welcome to this service of the Holy Eucharist here at Christ Church Poughkeepsie. For those who would like to follow along with the service, you can do so by going online to the website that is named below and download the bulletin for this Sunday's worship. Again, welcome. Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight. He he protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out all before us, the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of all of them. He will keep safe all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Even evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. Our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever it will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always reserved in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness, the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, the Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life. Amen. My favorite professor in divinity school was also my hardest, most challenging teacher both in terms of what I was forced to grapple with and also in terms of workload. This venerable professor, a man named T.F. Torrance, stood just one degree of separation between me and his mentor, Karl Barth. And so in Professor Torrance, I encountered two of the great theologians of the 20th century. To me, as a lowly student and foreigner in seminary in Edinburgh, Scotland, Professor Torrance was quite intimidating, and even more so when I started taking his courses. He had quite a following amongst students, and the rest of the faculty also treated him with considerable reverence. But many other students found his teachings and his teaching method very hard, and because of that, some avoided him and his courses as much as they could. Well, in today's Gospel reading, Jesus seems a little like my professor with his illustrious reputation and hard words. For the fifth week in a row, we dwell on John chapter 6, one extended metaphoric teaching by Jesus, declaring himself as being the bread of life, the living bread, the one whose flesh is true bread and blood is true drink. Now, Jesus has had a substantial following for his miracles and signs, as a healer and wonder worker, and the crowds clamor for more signs and wonders. In our gospel reading today, Jesus is now in the synagogue, giving additional meaning to the feeding of the 5,000 that had occurred a short time earlier, teaching them about the living bread that comes down from heaven, 
and connecting that to himself. Jesus' metaphor of himself being the bread of life reaches its full meaning this week as he states, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. And the one who eats this bread will live forever. As the incarnate one, he is flesh of our flesh and blood of our blood, and promises to be present to the end of the age. But since most of the people are metaphorically challenged, and some were taking him too literally, and also any notion of consuming the blood of another was forbidden to them, because such lifeblood was considered sacred to God, his hard teaching had a number of them clearing out of the room. And even those who understood the metaphor, namely that Jesus is the true source of sustenance and strength, and truly God in their very midst, and that the way he will give bread, give his flesh, his blood, will be through being lifted up on the cross. Many of them also fell away, unable to commit to following him. Many of Jesus' followers, in fact, did turn back and no longer went about with him. And so Jesus asks the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter answers, To whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Yes, but... Yes, but discipleship is more complicated than playing follow the leader. For in fact, we follow the leader, but also fall away. Life as a disciple is more complicated than singing, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. It's more like the verse from the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, that puts it, Let my goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. We know that Peter turned away even. And later, when the chips were down, we read, quote, Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. In fact, the whole of church history, with its divisions and reformations, has been shaped by those who have also gone away or split apart for one reason or another. Peter himself was just the first of many to commit, only to go away at the first terrible taste of fear in following Jesus all the way to the cross, denying him three times. Do you wish to go away? Even Peter goes away. But the good news is that Jesus does not go away from him. The risen Jesus comes after Peter and the rest of the disciples who forsook him and fled and invites them back. And we too are asked, do you also wish to go away? Many of us do, and many of us will go. And the same Jesus continues to seek us out wherever we may be. I am one person in that long line of those who have gone away, only to find Jesus reaching out for me as I inched my way back. My journey avoiding Jesus was a long one, beginning with a somewhat shallow childhood church experience, 
in which I had little sense of a loving or powerful being looking out for me and my dysfunctional family, never mind the rest of the world. Having said that, though, I can also say that I had a loving mother who encouraged resiliency and modeled compassion, as well as a choir director who encouraged discipline and enabled me to experience church life and sacramental mystery wrapped in and around beautiful music. I then had the opportunity in my high school years to be at a school that invited open inquiry in all areas of life, including religious and philosophical thought. That was great, although I didn't realize it at the time that this theological and religious inquiry equipped me mostly with language that reinforced and even masked an otherwise agnostic and even atheistic worldview. It was interesting and mentally stimulating, a real head trip, but it did leave me wondering what might be missing. At that time, I didn't believe in, nor did I have the language to help me believe in, a God who became flesh of my flesh and blood of my blood and who would seek me out. I still had a little to go on. I had very little to go on as to who Jesus was and is and was left feeling no closeness or relationship to a God who would act in personal and societal history. I then went to a university where, on the one hand, a very similar and open, agnostic and even atheistic inquiry was taught, while, on the other hand, there was a quite visible Christian community of students who were part of a group called the Campus Crusade for Christ. This group leaned in a very different direction, with a literalist interpretation of the Bible. And amongst that group, there was not a lot of room for questions and doubt, but rather faith as certainty and a presumption that they were amongst the saved and that folks like me, with all my questions and doubts, were not. Do you also wish to go away? I sure did. I wanted to get away from both kinds of Christian expression, the dry academic and the passionate but narrowly, but narrow certitudes. It took me a few more years to figure out that it wasn't Jesus I had left when I encountered and then stepped back from both of these approaches that fell far short of his gospel, his good but hard news. But like many who wander, I found I couldn't stay away altogether. To whom could I go? Jesus had the words of eternal life. And so I drifted into seminary, not with any initial sense of call to the ordained ministry, but definitely open to and hungry for something more than I had experienced up until then. I eventually found myself nourished by Jesus in the flesh and blood groundedness of the incarnation story, the words of good news about a God who lived and died as one of us, now risen and loose in the world, and who wants to be known and wants to draw every person to himself, leaving no one behind. I even came back to the church as well, for the rhythm of the church year, for its sacred seasons, for the sacramental mystery that I had experienced in my early years, and for a community of fellow travelers, a community of faith, that would welcome 
a seeker like me and help deepen my discipleship, enabling both spiritual awakening and social responsibility. Do you also wish to go away? Many of us have gone away for any number of reasons. A traumatic church experience, damaging teaching, boring routines, dysfunctional community, and on and on. It's important to make clear that it's not always Jesus himself we are going away from, as I've come to realize in my own journey. Watered down or spun out messages from the church and its leaders are often mistaken for the gospel of Christ, Jesus' own words of eternal life. We want to go away when the church is ridiculed for or scandalized by the messes we make ourselves, by our public or more personal infighting, and our contradictory claims on the truth. We want to go away when pundits and reporters lump us all together under one label, that does not fit our self-understanding at all. We want to go away when the church makes us angry or disappointed. We want to go away when the church breaks its promises, and it promises so much. Love, forgiveness, welcome, inclusion, meaning, purpose, healing, safe haven, empowerment, prophetic witness, community, new life, release to the prisoner, good news to the poor, a place for everyone at the table. Needless to say, the church doesn't always live up to these promises. And Jesus himself, he was not crucified because his teachings were easy. His ways are not our ways. His teaching is difficult. And this teaching about him as the bread, which if eaten will bring eternal life, wasn't his only difficult teaching. He was unequivocal about the difficulty of following him. If someone asks you to go with them one mile, go with them two. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Forgive not just seven times, but 70 times seven. Hard teaching? You bet it's hard. In fact, he turned more people off than he attracted. By the end of John's gospel, the crowd had dwindled from the 5,000 plus at the multiplication of the loaves and fishes down to 11 who had gone back to fishing until they saw him resurrected. You will want to go away sometimes. But here's the good news of today's gospel. As a former colleague of mine shared this brief story from the Talmud that goes like this. A son left his father and went away. He was asked to return, but said, I cannot return. Then the father sent a message to the son saying, return as far as you can. And I will come the rest of the way. Jesus' teaching about the bread and wine tells us the same thing. In a difficult class, where even the serious students are also beginners. Namely, there is always a way back. And the way back is not so difficult. Return 
as far as you can to this table set for you. Come as you are from wherever you've been on your journey. You can belong here even before you believe. And Jesus will meet you here as you feed on him in your heart by whatever faith you can muster with even a little thanksgiving. And he will take you the rest of the way. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Jim, Betty and Peter, Kate, Alan, David, Joanne, Griff, Phoebe, Caitlin, Kay, John, Janet, Bill, Mary, Diane, Bob, Betty and Daniel, Thomas, Paul, Neil and Betsy, Ellen, Greg, and the people of Afghanistan and Haiti. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the summer camp and for tonight's concert under the tent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Barbara, Bobby, and Anne, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, let us, your people, know that at the heart of turbulence there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you. Keep us from being content with things as they are, that from this central peace there may come a creative compassion, a thirst for justice, and a willingness to give of ourselves in the Spirit of Christ. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Welcome again to this service of the Holy Eucharist here at Christ Church Poughkeepsie. If you'd like to make a donation, you can easily do so by uh, getting online to tithely.com and looking for Christ Church Poughkeepsie on that website, or text the word GIVE to the phone number below, or send a check to our physical location here at 20 Carroll Street, Poughkeepsie, New York, 12601. Again, welcome, and may God bless you this week ahead.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Pray together our post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Christ be our new beginning, the hope and salvation of the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day, and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.